Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Thursday, it's July 7th, this will be our chart lesson for the day, and this is going to wrap up our week, no chart lessons on Fridays, another short week due to the July 4th holiday, but uh, anyway, I thought I'd start out showing you this weekly chart, or I'm sorry, daily chart. You can see that it looks, it indeed looks like we're still headed to this trend line at a minimum. Um, just to, we, we have this short term channel working up inside the larger down channel and you would expect we at least make a new high here and that's going to get us really close to this trend line if not to the trend line so it uh, doesn't mean we'll turn down there we could get a break and move higher we'll just have to see uh, but at this point our goal is still prices are moving towards testing this trend line right here so and even though it looked like it was probably going to be tough to do on these last couple of trading days, last three trading days. You can see that, um, you know, if you just follow the rules and kind of go with what's expected, which was that prices are going to retest this high and probably try to test this uh, downtrend line, then, you, you know, it keeps you on track. And that's why we're looking at this daily chart, because sometimes the intraday chart doesn't give you a lot of clues on uh, how things are going to follow through so we look at a little bigger chart on the daily and we kind of get a little better idea so anyway uh, we don't trade based on what we see here we only trade what we see based on the 2000 tick chart or whatever size chart you're actually trading but uh, but we can come back here for some clues and that's why we look at this chart just to get clues of where we might be going so uh, anyway let's uh, flip over to the other chart and go through the trades and wrap this day and week Okay, here's our 2000 tick chart, and you can see really what we had was a kind of a spike in channel up, and uh, this is way too steep, but price has kind of folded over into this flatter channel. And you'll notice, I, even though this is a relatively strong trend, uh, there are a couple of sale, a few sales in here, and I thought that'd probably be a good chance, a good learning opportunity to kind of explain that. Normally, in a strong trend like this, you don't you just want to look to buy. You want to wait for the prices to come back. However, this this blue channel didn't get confirmed until after lunch here, maybe 12, 30 or so, close to 1 o'clock. And so these sales, as you notice, come in here prior to that. And really, you have, a, you have an idea that maybe this channel is valid, but notice the green one you're coming up and you get the break and by this point you got a new high so you could be getting a reversal here so you'd want to pay attention to any decent setups here and then the same thing here it looks like maybe hey we just made another leg up and we could be turning over and we have had a lot of mixed trading lately so i think that gives you the green light to maybe sell on these if like i said you got to have a good setup and we'll go through these setups and you, you can see them when we get uh as we get to them but once we bounced here and confirmed this trend line there's really not many good trades period after that but um, you certainly don't want to sell after that so I wouldn't be looking for any sales regardless after that point not unless you've got some uh, I mean once we confirm this here you had to assume that at some point we're probably going to push higher back up to this upper side or else we're going to get outside of it and get a confirmed trend going the other way and we just never could get that going Every one of these little short-term trends uh, faded out rather quickly. So um, there's actually another one right here that I didn't mark that you could argue for. It's probably more like that right there, a little spike and channel down. And then we just really went sideways. So, um, But anyway, let's zoom in. We'll go through the trades. There's not a lot of them today, so this won't take too long. But when the market um, the market opened it, or I, I should say, when seven o'clock comes, we're it comes right up, right in here. I think just I think it comes on this bar here. Yeah, seven o four. This previous bar, six fifty nine. So seven o'clock comes right as we're making this high, and this looks like it's going to be a great opportunity to short this. But notice prices don't break lower; they just create this little inside bar. And you don't want to be going short there. Um, it would have worked, but you can see how it fails and then 
turns up and notice we get a second entry long there of course you're not really looking for a second entry long here but you also get a failure as well and it's that failure that's probably going to create a trap so if it breaks higher right here it's probably going to at least run back up and test these highs again which it does and uh, again there's a, another opportunity to short but because we made that new high and there's a possibility we could continue to trade a little higher you're not really expecting this to happen at this point but we could still push higher so once you see that new high right there i'd be waiting on a lower high and you just don't get one there and next thing you know prices are going higher so i made this one green because this is a little advanced but if you saw what i just explained again uh, there's a trap here notice that new low it's lower than that swing low there so we got a new low so you move it up and you get a first entry and it tries to go higher and it turns back down you get a second entry short and it fails and look at that nice signal bar that bounces look how many times we bounced off that midline there and turned up so you'll probably get a scout we're probably headed back to here at a minimum and i i believe if you took that trade it would have worked but I, that's why i always say wait on a lower high once you make a new high like that and you can see there's two points there so you, you could have if you wanted to take that trade i would skip it but we'll mark it green and then you can, none of this other really sets up. And then the next thing you know, we're going higher. You do get a, a second entry here. First entry, second entry. Uh, it looks more like a little sideways with a failed breakout. But we confirm the trend line here. And this bounces right off that trend line. And this is also, notice you got another swing low. It's lower than that one. So you get a first entry and a second entry that fails. So there's a failure there. If you just tried to take this as a second entry, it's probably not a good enough signal bar and it really doesn't look like two legs down it looks like a fake out here that if, if we break higher you're going to get another trap very similar to what we got here and you can see once it pushed through that res that resistance right there man it just took off and it was off to the races and we stayed in that upper half but you just don't get another chance to enter there there is another second entry here um but we know now that it probably bounced off that midline of this larger blue channel, but you don't know that ahead of time because you don't you don't have enough information to find that channel. And it's not back to the EMA quite. It's not back to the trend line quite yet. And so that's a very dangerous trade. Just skip it. And if you notice a few minutes later, you get a notice you got a new low and you get a first entry. And even though you didn't go higher, there's really a second entry there. So it's not really a failure until here. First entry, second entry, short. There's really even a third entry short there. Uh, but it, it's really just a failed breakout. Let me draw this here just so it's a little clear. But you can see that little congestion, which in all congestion is is a miniature range, micro range. That's a failed breakout. Again, right at the key entry point EMA. Nice signal bar. And this thing's looking pretty strong here, actually. And it runs on up, and then suddenly you get a break. And it's trying to go higher. Uh, there's a trap right here, but there's not much room back to the EMA. And you see how it bounced again. It probably would have worked. Uh, actually, I know it would have worked because even on the bounce, it didn't come back and stop you out. But I'd skip that trade probably. And I don't think I would take this trade because it looks, it could be a trap that's just too big. And this kind of looks kind of like this right here. And you see how you get trapped there. You don't really have the trend line here to worry about. But that still is too congested. And there's too big a chance. We're probably going to make a new low on this channel coming down. But you just don't know that. And really what's happened here is you've already got two legs up. So there's a good chance you could get a measured leg down, which you can see we went much further than that because you had this channel in play. And I just think you're better off skipping that. Um, it runs on down, you get a close outside, new low, and then it makes another new low. And it ends up we're just kind of chopping sideways here. I didn't mark this. There is a triple test right here, but it's a little congested. It's right into the EMA, which, again, when you're going sideways, you, you've probably heard me say this before. You don't worry so much about the EMA because if you did, you could never take a range trade almost. So the EMA, you can see we're clearly going back and forth. But the problem is that midline right there uh, had been holding 
multiple times. So it's a little dangerous going, but it is a triple test. So it's one you could argue for if you took, and it did make a new high too. So it's one you probably wait on a lower high. Again, I didn't mark it, but um, you could take that trade. It's just, it's not, it's not high probability, but there's reasons to take it. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, then we get a triple test here, and there's actually a second entry. Again, we don't look for second entries in a range, but if you get one, pay attention to it if everything else looks good. And notice how you broke lower right there. And so you've tested that line multiple times, so you'll probably at least come back to the midline. It may go higher, and this thing takes off there. Uh, run up, and then we're just working sideways again. And notice you do get a close. You get a close outside in the new high here. So... Um, Maybe that's not convincing enough. Maybe I just didn't draw it steep, uh, flat enough. Maybe it's more like that, and that actually does look better. You still get a close outside and new high, and then you get a two-legged correction, and then you're off again. So I would call that possibly the middle of a pattern. So look for another measured move. And you can see we got that plus a few more ticks there. And evidently this thing is moved and you got this one working up you get a break move to a new high and then you got one working down and again you don't even though you would probably have this drawn and it looks to be valid you still need that confirmation so you got to be a little careful um, trusting this completely although I'd pay attention to it so if you get a good setup on a sale, maybe you take it. And notice we're trending down. You get an overshoot, a break, and you get a second entry right there. Uh, at the very least, you would say, hey, we're probably going to try to work back down here to the trend line. But it doesn't. It makes it makes a couple legs down to a new low. And then you get a reversal pattern right here on a failed second entry short. I like going long right there. And then it runs up. You get a close outside. And then you get a second entry long. And this is just kind of typical price action what we've seen even though we're still in an uptrend here we're still trending up you can see the EMA but notice how it turns down and up turns down up so even though this is a fairly strong trend to the upside it it's there's mixed trading in here so like I said until we bounced here and it gets a this thing starts to get a lot more straight up you could short this so I hope you can see that Pay attention to the EMA. Prices are below it here. They're above it. They're below it. But then look what happens here. They're mostly above it all the way. And so that's when you know, hey, something's changed. Something's going on different here. But yeah. Um, where'd we stop off at now? I can't remember. We talked about the reversal. The second entry here. We're running on up. Uh, it's tempting to try to get long here, but look at all that resistance across there. Just just sit tight, and next thing you know, you do have a break and a couple of, more than a couple of legs up, and then you get a failure right here, and look how bearish. I like going short there, and then we work back up here, and you get a, notice that new low, first entry, second entry, another nice bar, and you're going to try to probably test this low. There's a lower high here, but now you got a little bit of a double bottom. This is another one. You could argue for that to be green. I'm not crazy about it. Um, it's just not a very good setup. And then, of course, you do get a um, another second entry here, but this is your signal bar. It's not. Let me make this a little bigger. Uh, you can see it makes the high there, and it's just not very. It's not bullish. I mean, it's too bullish. It's not bearish enough. And then, of course, we bounce right here. But notice we got the close outside, couple of legs down. Look at that bar. I like going long there. Um, I mean, you could almost argue for that to be green because if you see how this thing's playing out, that's a trade you probably want to take most times. But it's a little, it's a little more advanced. You need to be able to see all these these more intricate. So you need to be a little better chart reader. So if you're average chart reader or or new to this, you probably wouldn't take this trade. And of course, you do get a higher low here, but it's not a true failure or reversal, so it's too dangerous to take that trade. Even though the odds are we're probably going much higher, and we do. And then you get a close outside, swing to a new low, and now you got a trend working down. You get a break, move to a new low. You don't really get a setup there, unfortunately. A 
the setup to go long, that is. You make a higher low here. If that would have closed above the EMA, I'd say probably take that as a higher low. But the way it sets up, I just can't see taking that as a higher low. There's no failure here, and it runs all the way up to the top. And then it sells off. There is a second entry here. I didn't mark this one, but, I mean, that's right at 2.30. You know, we've talked about this before. Um, you can see there it's 2.30.20. If it's, you know, if it's within the first minute of hitting the 2.30 mark, like 2.31, 2.32, and you get a really nice setup, maybe you take it. And we did, the other thing is we did just come off the high, but that's a clear second entry. Um, it's probably going to come back to the EMA even if we're going lower, so maybe you take that trade. Uh, if I'd been trading, I'd probably take that trade because your prices would may try to test this high again because you can see that you clearly see this channel working up. And that's the first break, so it may try to test it again, but then again, you got to realize too that prices are probably headed back down to here, but they may come back and try to test that first to at least come back to the EMA there, in my opinion. And you can see that's what happened. You get a second entry short, and the next thing you know, it's racing down again. So just be careful with those. I didn't mark it originally for a reason, but uh, somebody will probably ask me about it. So, but there it is. Clearly a spike in channel up. And it's kind of a different one because usually it'll spike from down here and work up. And this one is like on the second leg, it spikes up and then works over. And I mean, this, this has just been some crazy market lately. Uh, but we did get some follow through buying from yesterday. And again, we talked about what the daily chart looks like. And this was to somewhat be expected based on the look of the daily chart. We're headed to that upper, we're he headed to test the, let's just flip back over there. And we'll go through it one more. So prices are going to attempt to retest this high. We got the trend line working out. Let me just color this so it's a little easier to see. I'll make it green. And we got the break. And now we're trying to retest the high. Plus you would expect prices, they came off the low of the uh, trend channel. So we're probably headed to the high of the trend channel. Now, sometimes the prices will work sideways to get in there. So we could end up just chopping sideways. We could turn down and work over there. But the expectation is we're going to try to retest this high, and my guess is we'll try to retest that trend line there in the meantime. And we could even push higher. We'll just have to see what happens. But that's why i was been expecting prices to try to push higher the last few days, even though it starts out looking bearish and, and maybe even closes just looking neutral. I mean, this is still bullish here, even though we look... We, we, closed way off our high and th but this is a neutral day and we, we talked about it. yesterday was kind of a trading range day and then this one you can clearly see this one's even though we closed off the high again it's a very bullish day overall we just we sold off some at the close and i think that's a lot to do with people are scared to carry things overnight because you know what happens during the overnight it usually it'll if it's if we're going higher it usually sells off in the overnight before it goes higher later in the day it seems to do the opposite in the overnight lately of what it continues to do in the, you know, during regular trading hours during the day. So, you know, keep that in mind. But anyway, uh, that's what we've got and not much else I can say about it. I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, no chart lesson tomorrow. It's Friday. We'll be back Monday. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com and we'll see you next time.